There's one myth about Napoleon that's even crazier than the height thing. Well, what is it? The myth that his penis was never stolen. Wait, what? Yep, total myth. You see, when Napoleon died, the doctor who performed his autopsy removed his penis, and it has been on quite the journey ever since. Hold on, you cannot act like this is just a normal thing that you just said. How do you know that Napoleon's penis was removed? How do you not know? Gotta be honest, not really where I thought that this was gonna be going. Napoleon, a Bonaparte. For most of us, death is a good indication that our sex organs won't get much attention. But for Napoleon Bonaparte, death was just the beginning, for his penis. A French doctor cut off Napoleon's penis and gave it to the former emperor's chaplain, Abbe Ange Vignali, whose family kept it for almost a century. I loved being a part of the family that owned Napoleon's penis. Everyone who came by was always like, no way, let me see it, or whatever. We'd take it out, show it to them, then put it away. Man, those were some good times. I got sad at the end, sorry. It's okay. Then Napoleon's penis made its way through several hands before landing in the lap of collector A.S.W. Rosenbach in 1924 who brought it to America after buying it for 400 pounds. There was no better conversation starter at a party than Napoleon's dried, severed penis. But then, times grew dark for this journey Johnson. In 1969, the penis was sent back to auction in Paris and did not sell. Eight long years later, the nearly discarded dong sold to America's leading urologist, Dr. John K. Latimer, for $3,000. Well, I'm a man who knows what he wants, so when I see an opportunity, I'm gonna grab it by the balls. In this case, the balls were not available, so I grabbed the next best thing. And so, Napoleon's penis entered the place it had always belonged, a suitcase under a bed in New Jersey. <laughs>